Hey guys, well, this video is going to go through the upcoming days to the drags and the zip tie drags. It was total chaos around here. We were working around the clock to get everything done, fabbed, and praying everything worked. So, in all the debauchery of getting everything done, we had some camera malfunction, okay? We lost all audio at one time. So, I'm going to actually narrate you guys through this week's video so you guys can understand exactly what's going on. So... First thing I'm working on is building a panel for the pasture floorboard. So I have somewhere to mount my fuse panel and relays and a few things like that. So let's get that made up. I bent this up out of 16 gauge steel. Uh, it didn't need to be anything crazy. I put a couple folds in it to raise it off of the driver's side floorboard so all the self tappers weren't going to be poking through the firewall. Once I have the panel made itself, I'm going to start taking and installing everything on it. Uh, the point was to put main thing on together on it on the workbench before I put it in the car just to eliminate the amount of time that I was wedged in that floorboard. Now you'll notice that the fuse panel I use is a little different. It's made by Blue Sea. Now it's for marine use. I use a lot of marine based products and it's because I came from that world. I've worked at boat dealerships and stuff for a long time and I know the parts and a lot of times the marine stuff is made heavier than the car stuff. So you'll see me use a lot of marine stuff on a lot of my builds and that's just because I know it and it's designed to be around water and take different abuse so that's why I use it. You'll notice I put a few relays on that panel. Now I put a starter relay, a fuel pump relay and a fan relay on the actual panel with the fuse and everything and that's because those are the ones that would be most important to me if something went wrong because those are the ones that are going to keep the engine running. All right, at this point it's Thursday. I went to work on Thursday morning. I'm so sick, coughing, carrying on everything else. They sent me home. So what do you do to relax? You finish building your race truck. So at this point, we're working on all the wiring. Uh, Austin actually was able to work the schedule around. He was off with me. So I'm going to be wiring. He is going to be resealing the diff because we had leaking problems with RTV. Now, I didn't know RTV goes bad, but it does. So, went and got some new RTV. I had Austin start working on cutting the bed mounts off of the bed because if you remember when I shortened the frame, I had to kick it a half inch. Well, that throws off all the bed spacing. So, he's cutting all the mounts off so that we can rework new mounts on it to bring it down that half inch and get it all squared up. We ended up having to plasma a large hole in the bottom of the bed for the fuel cell. Uh, there was no way it was going to clear and I didn't want the fuel cell hanging down any lower. Now we've gotten the bed on. It's just tacked. Okay, I didn't weld it out. It's just tacked sitting on there. So we're trying to figure out exactly where we need to square it to move on from there to make the new mounts. Meanwhile, I've got Austin taking and cutting hip bars for the sides of the cage and he's figuring that out so I can get them welded in. At this point the kids really came together. Uh, everybody was out there helping doing whatever they could and we went at 4.30 in the morning Austin he was at that point I sent him to bed. Now me and Caleb we went all night. We didn't stop. So we actually worked all the way through the morning. Of course the hood didn't fit so I had to cut the hood to get the air cleaner to go through the hood. Now I really didn't like the way it looked so what do you do? I built a hood scoop. Alright so then we get to Friday. Alright we've gotten the truck complete. Now it's 5.30 in the morning on Friday and I haven't slept and I made a dumb mistake. I slipped with the drill bit and put it through the radiator. So there went my aluminum radiator. I tried to seal it, it wouldn't seal. So I got on Craigslist, called this guy in town. It actually has these Chinese aluminum radiators. Uh, sent Austin after it, he got it. We were supposed to leave at noon to go to zip tie drags. Yeah, we left at 8 o'clock at night because we didn't get the radiator in our hands till 6 at night. I had to cut all the mounts off the front of the truck and 
re-weld new mounts because the radiator I got, the only one I could get my hands on, was three inches taller and an inch wider. And the hoses were a different size. So I scrambled as fast as I could, cut all my mounts off, re-weld them in a different spot, got it on there, and then we ended up actually stopping at an auto parts store on the way to the track and buying a couple different hoses to cut up and make what we needed. Drove two and a half hours down there, a caravan of all of us, we made it. Freezing cold out there. Um, we got there, we actually tented it for the night, we all slept out there in tents. Um, it was freezing, but we had a great time, okay? Got up the next morning, finished fixing the radiator, went through tech. Tech guys do not like me. I don't understand, I, I wasn't mean, nothing like that. Um, but they started talking trash about the truck the minute we pulled up. And honestly, there was a 70 Cuda Cherry next to me, a year one Camaro next to me, and then there was me. So, the guys, the one, okay, they got upset about the hood because I didn't have four pins, I only had two. And they were like, well, what are you doing to keep the back down? And I was like, well, there's a four self-tappers right there that are holding it down. The guy was like, well, what? What are you supposed to, how are we supposed to open the hood if there's a fire? And I said, bend it. And the other guy walks over and he goes, that, that's fine. We can bend it. If there's really a problem, we pull the front pins and bend it. So I looked at that guy and I was like, thanks. Well, the older guy that was doing the tech that was not happy with the truck, he, uh, he sits there and he's like, well, he's whispering to another guy. And he's all, well, they either cut up a short bed or they cut down a long bed or something like that. And I looked at her and said, yeah, I took 20 inches out of the frame. And he goes, why on earth would you do that? I said, that's how long my drive shaft was. And he goes, are you telling me you cut a truck down to fit a drive shaft? I said, yeah. He goes, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Go to a machine shop, buy a drive shaft. I said, did you read the sticker on the windshield that said broke? And he just looked at me and said, drive shaft's 500 bucks. He said, yeah. I said, I shorted the truck for 15. Well, I guess I shouldn't have said that. So at that point, they started going over the truck with fine tooth comb. Then they got irritated when they found out how overbuilt the truck was and how safe it was. When they looked at the cage and then they looked at this and that and all the stuff, they couldn't find anything to get me on. So they passed me on tech and I waved as I drove away. So anyway, Get down into the staging lanes, um, and here's gonna be my first pass. All right, one thing that didn't make it on the tape is I'm two cars back from doing a burnout. You know, working out the jitters, I'm making sure everything's good in the truck, and all of a sudden, the driver's side window falls, just off the track. So, I'm freaking out. Matt from Unlimited Marine was like my crew chief type guy. He's my buddy and one of my sponsors. So, He's scrambling, trying to get the window up. I'm trying to help, strapped in, trying to do it. And the cars are moving forward. We're, we're rolling, people are pushing the truck for us as we're doing this. And there's no window crank because the handle, you know, you can't roll it down. So I don't even put the handle on it. So we're freaking out, doing everything we can. Yell over to the guy next to me, I'm getting ready to raise, if he's got a pair of pliers. And he jumps out, grabs a pair of pliers, throws them to us. We fight, we get the window rolled down then it still won't go back. So I take a water bottle I had in the truck with me, crush it, jam it down between the window and the door jam. The other guy throws us a bunch of towels rolled up. We shove it in the door jam and pin the window up so I can make the run. And just in time as we do it is when they wave me forward, we shut the door and roll up and do the burnout. So needless to say, it was a little jittery. So we do the burnout and then on the then we actually hit the pass and I've got video of that right now
All right, so that was our first pass. Truck did amazing, okay? I kept the shifts down at 4,500 RPM. This engine can rev to almost eight grand. I was just keeping the shifts lower because I didn't know what the truck was gonna do. Went dead straight. I could have took my hands off the wheel. It ran perfect. I couldn't ask for better. Super excited. I ran a 14.8 at 98 miles an hour. Now, that wasn't bad. It's not as fast as I want to go, but for a first shakedown run, and I completely blew the tires off on the launch. Um, I just spun them forever before I was able to get it to hook and go. So, not bad. Okay, cycle around, let's do it again, and fix the window in the meantime. So I get to the staging lanes, and we fix the window, and me and Matt are sitting there talking about how the truck did, and I was ecstatic at how well it ran, and how well everything worked. So we decided to send it. All right, so I dial it up, my shift light to six grand. <clears throat> I don't want to take it above that yet. We're going to baby step it up. Take it up to six grand, pull up, and we do our launch. At this point, the truck died on me, and luckily I thought quick, I hadn't turned on the fuel pump. So I turned it on real quick, refired the truck, ready to go. Second launch, I do the exact same thing again. I blow the tires off on the line, and I got back in. I reeled the guy in, and right here at this point, you're going to see drive shaft grenading. Okay, at over 100 miles an hour, the drive shaft just exploded. So we still won the race, um, but yeah, we were done for the day. Uh, if you watch carefully here when you see the camera drop to the battery box, that was from the impact of the drive shaft actually exploding. And if you look just below the battery in the picture, you're going to see a giant hole that formed, and that's where the drive shaft punctured a hole in the bed. Well, guys, all in all, this was a great weekend, a great experience, this whole build. Um, just to let you show what happened, I went over and pulled the drive shaft today. I've got the truck over at Matt's shop um, at Unlimited Marine because my garage is such a mess right now. I think almost every tool I own is on the ground or around. So he saw it, said, you know what, take the truck to my shop, clean up your, your garage, get it straight, and then we'll bring it home. So hopefully this weekend we'll bring it home. Now we do have more plans for this love in the future. We've already located a limited slipper in for it. We've got a turbo, built turbo 400 to put in it, and obviously a new drive shaft. So we're gonna get something that can handle the pressure. So February 8th is the drags here um, at Firebird Raceway, excuse me, Wild Horse Pass, it keeps changing names. Um, so our plan is to take the truck out again then. As long as money's there, we'll do it. So. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this entire build. I hate that it ended this way, but you know what? I had a blast building it. I had a great time running it. I'm happy with everything I did. So what else can you ask for? So anyway, guys, well, I appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. And if you want to see some other videos over here, otherwise, see you guys next week.